Hello everyone, good morning. Welcome again to your channel, Learn Data Science with Pranjal. In this session, we will discuss all the terminologies used in NLP, that is your natural language processing, including your term document matrix and IDF, inverse document frequency. And if this is your first visit to the channel, please click on the subscribe button so that you do not miss any other video on the data science. There are a number of terms which are used in NLP. So the first term is your word boundary. Word boundary actually means breaking your document into number of words or creating your document into bag of words. After splitting your document into words, the second terminology which is used is your tokenization. Tokenization means assigning an ID to a particular word. A tokenization also means that you split your document into words, phrases or idioms and for each word, phrase or idiom you assign a token or an ID to it. After tokenization, the another terminology used is your stemming. Stemming basically means mapping to your root word. So let's say in the document the word is mentioned as cars. So the root word for the cars may be your car. So stemming basically means mapping to your root word. The next terminology used is your TF-IDF. TF-IDF. So TF stands for your term frequency. TF stands for your term frequency. Frequency means how frequently a word is occurring or the number of times a word is occurring in a document. IDF stands for your inverse document frequency. In a particular document, if a word is repeated number of times, so the frequency of that word will increase. So if the frequency is more, we get an idea that that particular document was talking on a topic which is related to that particular word. For example, in a data science class, the words like your mean, median, mode, standard deviation may be very common. And so these words give an idea on what topics were being discussed in that class. So that's the advantage of term frequency. Higher the frequency, more important is the word. But the very same thing becomes the disadvantage when the frequency may be more, but the word may not be important. So to catch that problem, we use our IDF, which is my inverse document frequency. Formula for IDF is log of log of total number of documents divided by number of documents in which that particular word occurs. IDF is log of total number of document in the corpus divided by the number of documents in which that particular word occurs. Here I am saying total number of document, it means there are more than one document. Let's take an example. Let's say we are working for a healthcare industry and there are number of documents related to the healthcare industry documents related to the patient's report. In all these documents, the very frequent words may be your blood type, blood group. Let's say we have 1000 documents. So in each of these 1000 documents, the blood type or the blood group word may be appearing. Imagine a second scenario, a word like your cancer may not be appearing in each and every report. So let's say out of those 1000 documents, the word cancer was appearing in just 10 documents. Since blood type is appearing in all the documents and we are already talking about the healthcare industry, so this blood type doesn't make much sense to us. Word blood type is very common. It's present in each and every document, but it's not adding much meaning to the topic. Just by seeing the word blood type, I, I do not get any idea that on what particular topic this document was talking about. But take the another scenario. For example, your cancer. The word cancer is not appearing in each and every document. But wherever it appears, it increases the importance. So let's say it appears in 10 documents and wherever it appears, we, we are sure that those documents are talking about the cancer or a patient who is suffering from the cancer. So the word cancer is appearing less number of times, but wherever it appears, the importance is very high. And it's just opposite with the word your blood type. The blood type is appearing in each and every document, but its importance is less. But if we check only on the basis of term frequency, the frequency of blood type is very high and the frequency of cancer is very low. But wherever your word cancer appears, the, it becomes very important. So that's the advantage of my IDF. So let's calculate the idea for, for blood type. To be
so i'm saying total number of documents in the corpus so total number of documents are my 1000 log of 1000 divided by 1000 why 1000 why i'm dividing by 1000 because this blood type is appearing in each and every document so log 1000 by 1000 it becomes log 1 and log 1 is 0 let's calculate the idf for the word cancer so i'll say log of 1000 why because i am saying total number of documents in the corpus so the total number of documents still remain 1000 1000 divided by 10 so log so so this becomes your log 100 this becomes your log 100 and log 100 we know is yeah value is 2 so even when the cancer was appearing less number of times the idf value is high compared to your blood type the next term used in NLP is my disambiguation. So, di so disambiguation means context versus content. So example of context versus content, let's say I am you would be your word play. So play as in people are playing some game and play as could also be as your drama. Another example could be your light, L-I-G-H-T, light. So light as in sunlight, moonlight or in light also as it's lighter in weight. So this is example of your context versus content. What's the content and in which context the word was? The next term used here is your topic model. So topic model means you're discovering your hidden or the abstract patterns. A particular document may be talking about number of topics. For example, if we write a story of a movie, so even though the movie may be the action movie, 70% action, they would be 10% drama and 10, 20% comedy and 10% love or romance so within a particular topic so within a particular document or a particular story there would be number of hidden topics the next term used in your nlp is your name entity recognition name entity recognition this also depends how rich or how powerful your dictionary is so let's say when i enter dollar it tells me that it's a it's something related to your money if i type if i type the city as london new york delhi mumbai whatever it tells me it's a name of a place so name entity recognition will again depend how rich your dictionary is let's see the last term used in nlp that is my tdm tdm is very important because whenever i create any model in nlp i always create my tdm that is my term document matrix term document matrix is basically your sparse matrix and in term document matrix each unique word becomes a column or I can say it becomes a feature. Each unique word becomes a column or a feature. Let's take one example to understand our TDM. I have already created an Excel sheet for explaining the TDM. There are one, two, three, four, five. I have written five sentences. Imagine each sentence as a document. I have taken a very small, small sentences or a document, but in real life, these documents can be of thousands of lines. But our aim is to see what TDM is how TDM actually works and in the definition I have said that each unique word becomes a column or a feature in the TDM so let's create our columns I am not taking if as a I am not taking if as a separate word because I am treating it as a stop word so let's say life and then going again this I am not taking as a separate word I am taking data and then I am taking science and the next word is your most <clears throat> so i have one two three four five documents as a rows and in the columns each unique word has become a column so for example your life so this word life is occurring number of times it's occurring over here it's occurring over here it's occurring over here but while creating the columns i have taken life only once now let's see how our TDM actually is created. So the first document, how is life going? So the word how is appearing over here. So I'll say one, life one, going one. The word data is not appearing in the first document. So I'll mark it as zero. Science is not appearing. So I'll mark it as zero. Class is not appearing zero. So rest everything becomes your zero. This is data science class. So data one, science one class one and rest everything becomes 
zero. So your one is indicating the presence of a word, and zero is indicating the absence. Class is very interesting. So I'll say class as one, very as one, and interesting as one, and rest everything becomes your most interesting thing in life is to sleep. So I'll say sleep as one, life as one, interesting as one, most as one, thing as one, as one, and rest everything will become your zero. Pollution has reduced the average lifespan. So pollution as one, your life as one, span as one, reduced as one, and then your average as one, and rest everything becomes your zero. So basically your zero indicates the absence and one indicates the presence. So in this small example itself, we can see that the presence of zeros is much more compared to your ones. And that is why your term document matrix is a sparse matrix. So in real life, when we create a term document matrix, it may have thousands and thousands of columns. This brings us to the end of the session. In next session, we will see how to build a model using our NLP technique. Till that time, happy learning. Thank you.